Have you ever heard someone say, I'll be back in a jiffy? It's one of those casual expressions we toss around without thinking. A jiffy sounds quick, almost too quick to measure. But what may surprise you is that jiffy isn't just slang. It's an actual scientific unit of time, recognized and used in different fields. And depending on who you ask, it could mean anything from a fraction of a second to the time it takes light to travel the width of an atom. Yes, seriously. Today, we're diving into this tiny little mystery. Why is the smallest unit of time called a jiffy? Where did the term come from? How did it become a real measurement? And just how short is a jiffy in scientific terms? Let's explore the surprisingly rich history behind a word we use almost every day, right here on History of Simple Things. Most of us grew up using the word jiffy to mean really fast. Parents say it to kids. Friends say it when they're reassuring someone they won't take long. It's playful, casual, and vague. Definitely not the kind of word you'd expect to find in a physics textbook. But before it became scientific, jiffy was just slang. The earliest written use in English dates back to the late 1700s. The exact origin is unclear, but linguists think it may have come from older words or sounds that mimic something quick or sudden, like a snap, a flick, or even a flash. In other words, jiffy was the verbal equivalent of saying, just a sec, long before seconds were something people could casually talk about. Despite sounding informal, the term stuck. People used it for generations, and eventually the scientific community decided to borrow this fun little word and give it a precise definition. But here's where the story gets interesting. Scientists didn't all agree on what a jiffy actually meant. The first scientific use of the word jiffy came from physics, thanks to an American chemist and physical scientist named Gilbert Newton Lewis. In the 1920s, he defined a jiffy as the amount of time it takes light to travel one centimeter in a vacuum. Now that sounds extremely fast, and it is. Light moves at about 299,792,458 meters per second. So traveling just one centimeter takes roughly 33.3564 picoseconds. A picosecond is one trillionth of a second. So in Lewis's definition, one jiffy equals about 33 trillionths of a second. That's insanely tiny. In fact, it's so tiny that you would experience millions and millions of jiffies just in the time it takes to blink. But that wasn't the only definition of a jiffy. Different branches of science started giving it their own meanings. As computing grew during the 20th century, programmers and computer scientists also adopted the word jiffy, but they defined it very differently. In computing, a jiffy is the length of one tick of the system clock, the internal timer that measures how fast a computer processes tasks. Depending on the system, this can be anywhere from one millisecond, one thousandth of a second, to 10 milliseconds or more. So in computer science, one jiffy can equal 0.01 seconds or 0.001 seconds or even 0.016 seconds, depending on the operating system. Compared to the physics definition, that's huge, millions of times longer. Imagine trying to schedule computer processes using the physics jiffy. You'd have so many time intervals that even the fastest processor on Earth couldn't keep up. It's kind of funny. The scientific version of jiffy is unimaginably tiny while the computer version is tiny, but still something humans can conceptualize. You might be wondering, why use the word jiffy at all? 
Why not just keep using seconds, milliseconds, nanoseconds, or picoseconds? There are a couple of reasons. One, simplicity. Jiffy's easy to say and easy to remember. Instead of saying 33.3564 picoseconds, scientists could say one Jiffy, and everyone in that field would know what it meant. Two, playfulness. Science can be intimidating. Borrowing a lighthearted word from everyday language adds a bit of fun, especially when talking about abstract or complex topics. Physics already has whimsical names like quarks, gluons, and strange matter. Jiffy fits right in. 3. Practical Use In computing, Jiffy's help track time intervals for scheduling. The system clock doesn't count seconds. It counts ticks. So having a dedicated unit for these tiny intervals makes programming more intuitive. 4. Communication a universal, catchy term helps different scientists communicate more effectively, especially when discussing ultra-fast events. So while Jiffy might sound silly, it actually solves some real problems, both linguistic and scientific. Part of what makes Jiffy so memorable is that it bridges the gap between casual language and scientific precision. It's a perfect example of how scientific terminology doesn't have to be stiff or complicated. Sometimes the best unit of measurement is one that's easy for everyone to relate to. Think about it. We have metric prefixes like nano, pico, femto, and atto. They're technically accurate, but don't feel approachable. When you say a jiffy, People instinctively know you mean something quick, even if they don't know the exact number. The next time you hear someone say, I'll be back in a jiffy, you'll know there's a surprising amount of science behind that phrase. A word that started as a fun, casual expression eventually became one of the smallest units of time ever measured, tiny enough that billions of jiffies can pass between blinks. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.